Yo, what is up YouTube men? Today we're talking about Maximum Overdrive, one of the more rare things to unlock on NBA 2K24. Now, you guys may be wondering, how do you unlock this? You have to get five builds to 95 overall. Is it worth doing just to get Maximum Overall? Absolutely not. This is just something that kind of happens if you're somebody like me that is a YouTuber that makes a lot of builds. Maybe you play a lot of different game modes, so you want to have a bunch of different builds. Now, whenever you get it, it is worth using. It's not like it's something useless in the game. How I like to use it is I put my favorite badges in there, you know, Space Creator, Dream Shake, Midi Magician, and I got them to Hall of Fame super quick. Now, I will probably switch them out. You can kind of use Maximum Overdrive like immunity. If you get a badge to Hall of Fame and you have it in Maximum Overdrive, as long as you do it once a game, that is never going down from Hall of Fame. It's a little bit different from regular overdrive. When I was making builds before maximum overdrive, just putting my badges in regular overdrive, I would say I would get the badges I wanted at Hall of Fame in about five games, whether that's Rec, Pro-Am, my career. But once I got maximum overdrive, now I can do it in about three games, as long as I'm taking, you know, a decent amount of midi fades, if I go for midi magician, hop jumpers if I'm going for space creator and you know whatever else I need to get whatever badge I'm trying to get now maximum overdrive was a good idea I like that they and you see man the nice move right there and once he sees that he ends up quitting the game I got a few games for you guys in the background why I talk we can take a few minutes to talk about badges in general in NBA 2K24. In the comments, let me know what you guys think about the badge system. Now, I 100% get what 2K was trying to do with the badges. They were trying to make us feel like we got badges based on our play style. So if you're somebody that was a great shooter, a great catch and shooter, you know, you would get the green machine, catch and shoot, dead eye, badges like that. If you're somebody that had high layup and high dunk and you did things like scoops, and two steps you would get those badges but maybe you wouldn't get the other badges associated with layups like acrobat if you're never doing them but unfortunately what ended up just happening was a tedious badge grind nobody wants to have to earn a badge and then be able to lose it if they're gonna try to do something like this they need to make sure they give it a system where you get the badges and you keep it forever because there's nothing worse than changing your play style for a bit and having a hall of fame badge go down to silver you don't even notice it and then you're you know you're feeling obligated to get it back because you're like well i don't want to have this badge on silver even though you haven't been using it if you can have the badge on hall of fame why not go ahead and have it on hall of fame Yes, the floor setters, yes, the overdrives, the maximum overdrives, the immunity, it is all nice. And I'm telling you guys, if you're not utilizing overdrive and immunity, you should absolutely be doing it just because it's going to speed up the process for you. Just because, you know, something like Box Out Beast Hall of Fame, I've always been able to keep that badge at the highest level, whether that is gold, whether that is Hall of Fame. But I know a lot of people, a lot of friends that I play with, they cannot keep that badge for anything. So all you have to do is just get the badge on Hall of Fame, focus on box outs for one, maybe two My Career games, get it there, and then you can just throw it in Immunity, and then you're set, you're done. I mean, you could even throw it in Overdrive beforehand, get it to Hall of Fame using that, and then put it in Immunity, then you could do something else in Overdrive. You can be crafty with it. And that's actually something maximum overdrive is really nice for. If you just make a build as I hit him with some nice layups right here. I found this new layup package and I've been having a blast with it. These scoops, man, they are beautiful in NBA 2K24. I love how this game has layups. But like I was saying, maximum overdrive will speed up the progress. Especially if you just want to start playing on a build right away. You can just pick four badges you know you're going to need. You know, maybe something like open looks, catch and shoot badges that you're gonna get fast anyway but because you have maximum overdrive you're going to get them that much faster it's nothing game changing though it's nothing game breaking though there's no competitive advantage to it will you even notice having it probably not once you have maximum overdrive too this is the thing you already have 595 plus overall builds i don't know how many more builds you're going to be making in the game in the comments, let me know if you guys have Maximum Overdrive. Let me know how many builds you have, if you're close to it. This is the game I was talking about. This is the best guy I played in the 1v1 theater this whole day. So, he beats me off the dribble with the first possession. Right here, though, I played good D. He does a spin, gets a contested layup to go in. I mean, now he's feeling like he's on fire because, as you can see right here, he just does a quick behind the back, gets the three off. A couple of possessions of bad defense, but, I mean, hitting him in the yellow layup. And look at this, man. 
he hits another yellow layup now. That wasn't the best contest, but that is still unfortunate to see. He must have a super high layup on his build. I wish I would have checked it, but it was not going to keep up. So I get the stop right there. I'm on this new 6'11 stretch big. You know what move I'm going to go to. They got to prove that they can guard the post hop shot, and then I can start getting a bit more crafty. Speaking of crafty, just a normal crossover into a KD fade is all you need. And this new 87 driving dunk, it goes well with drop steps, post spins, doing a dunk immediately off of it. Once again, he's playing a little bit back. This time, I'm going to throw out the Jokic hop jumper at him. I'm doing a lot of different moves. Once again, going to the fade. And right here, I'm going to end up getting a meter dunk at 14 points and sell a bit now. I miss a yellow shot after that. That is a bit normal. Everybody's going to miss a yellow every once in a while. But then I miss a wide open three. I'm going to let you guys see it right here, which cannot happen, especially when you're going up against somebody that is good, especially when I'm on a tall big and this guy is moving very fast. And he's hit some yellow contested layups, so I don't know how many more he's going to hit. Thankfully, he used them all up early game. And I'm able to win it with some smart open shots. Let me know if you guys enjoyed the video, man. This is Tonic. If you guys do want to drop a like and subscribe, of course, I do appreciate it a ton. I will catch you guys in the next one. I'm out with that ankle breaker right there.